Hello, this is Overlord Bo, and we're back. And today, in the series of beginner mistakes, today we'll be going over the top five beginner BB mistakes, plus one bonus one. So it's a total of six for BBs. So I'll be going over those, plus showing you examples of the wrong way to do things, and then the right way. So uh, yeah, let's hop right into it. And again, if you guys have any questions or concerns, about each of these mistakes and ready to do it just let me know in the comments down below and i will do my best to answer them in a timely manner now let's get started now the first mistake we'll be talking about is dcping one fire it's probably the most classic new mistake that i notice nowadays is it's very common even to this day is just bb's dcping one fire uh, bees will get fed on layer once, put it out, and immediately get lit on two fires, and occasionally a flood for good measure. And that's at least 20% of your health gone, up to 40% if you don't have flags or bases with viability. In most situations, you want to let the one fire burn. And it, it does suck to be on fire, it does, but healthy BBs can handle it along with their heal. If you get lit on two fires or take a flood, that's when you want to DCP under heavy focus fire. It may be necessary to hold until you're on a triple fire to use DCP or when you're able to get far enough away to be able to make sure you can go dark when you DCP. Now in this situation, as you saw earlier, I already DCP'd and already used my heal. So at this point I would push too aggressively. Shouldn't have been up this far. It was a disaster, biggest disaster of all time. And because I didn't, I DCP'd early, and uh, yeah, dead. So that was the wrong way to do the DCP one fire. In this situation, I'm gonna showcase the right way. So as you can see, I pushed up a little bit too far. I'm trying to showcase the mistake here. Certifying him here, I got one fire, so I'm not DCPing yet. I'm waiting to DCP, I'm waiting to DCP. Now I'm on a double fire, I start my turn out. And then I pop my DCP as I'm turning out to know when I know I'm going to be able to go dark. As you can look on the mini map there, I'm able to go dark with the smoke screen they're covering from the battleship being able to spot me. I just have to turn dark, turn, and I'll be able to go dark uh, over time. Also, make sure not to do what I do here. I, uh, Dotsard. Yeah, I Dotsard the island here. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That's also another BB mistake is pulling a Dotsard. So, uh, yeah, don't copy that, please. Uh, please don't, or you'll die. So, ripperoni. Moving on to the second most common mistake I see in BB players is being too aggressive. This is definitely very common with secondary battleships overall. This happens a lot with the new German BB players. This is like their first game, and they're shining new Bismarck or Turpes. You got those secondaries, that good armor, even torpedoes. So, Clearly she's a brawling ship, right? Well, when the match starts and they instantly press that W key in yellow into the middle and they got the Sabaton music playing, blasting a full volume. Three minutes later, their shiny new BB is burnt to a crisp while the rest of the team is sighs in despair. Oh, I'm a noob, a scrub. Why are you doing that? Like, oh my Lord. Even the mightiest of BBs must respect the power of focus fire. Going in too early without support will result in a quick death that accomplishes nothing for your team. So whenever you're trying to be able to push in or be able to like push in or you want to push in, you gotta fin off opposition first by staying at range, pick off vulnerable ships and wear down the enemy first. Then when there are just a few isolated enemies, that's when you go in for the kill. Timing your aggression is a big part of BB gameplay. So working on recognizing the right situations is situation to go ham now in this current instance i'm going to show you the wrong way to do it now as you can see this is pretty early in the match here that i am pushing in in pushing into their team a little a way too early in the match when they have way too much hp and too much health and i'm just pushing right into a dd this is not how you push in. This is being way too aggressive here. I was just trying to make sure I showcase the wrong. This is not what you want to do. Because you're going to see what happens. Not much is going to be accomplished here. You're pushing right into the enemy. You're going to get focused fired. You're going to get farmed down really quick. You're going to get focused by everything. And you're going to die super, super quick. Now, a lot of people just want to brawl. W win. 
have a lot of fun just do that but there are times and places for it but at the very beginning of a match is a no-no and you don't want to do that it's very tempting though it's very 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 tempting but unfortunately you can't just w in your matches because you're gonna die just like this now i'm gonna show you the proper way if you're being too aggressive like this right now what you want to do is you want to turn out you want to make sure that you're not showing your broadside when he's looking at you so as you can see i'm looking at where his guns are at making sure he's not shooting at me i turn out get into a cutting angle and i keep him at just enough distance where my seconder is able to go off and i can then kite away from him while letting my secondaries and i also rotate my guns if you're wondering why i'm looking over like in this direction i'm doing this so i'm able to rotate my guns quicker to make sure that they turn quicker to be able to get the guns back onto uh, that battleship to continue the focus fire on him. Normally, if you're going to do a turnout like I just did there, you want to get your guns rotated around quickly so you're able to get your guns back in the fire as quickly as possible. Now, as you can see, once he's about to go down, I already start slowing down to get my guns and my secondaries back onto the other ship is, that is pushing. And now remember, and this is this is the right this is the right this is the right instance of being when you push up too far you're being a little bit too aggressive and they're pushing in you you want to turn out you don't want us to stay bowing you want to turn out get that kiting angle and then w away if they're pushing hard in you you just full blast it get as far away from them as possible because they're just going to farm you down so get out of there make sure you stay inside your secondaries to still get that damage going with the secondaries and still you also still want to be like right there to help out your team unfortunately i couldn't help my teammate there he was being too aggressive and uh yeah he didn't do it properly he kind of sat there and kaplowed well that's uh more of his problem so there's only so much you can do because if i would have pushed into that rupert he has torpedoes so does that ship there and they would have just torpedoed me and yeah yeah that would have been another dead teammate now at this point now that i see that the team their team is now more isolated i then turn back around back into them to push back in with my teammates this is when you turn back around and you push back in after you got their team lowered health you killed off a few of their team you got it more isolated that's when you turn back in and you start being more aggressive you, you take the advantage on the push you take advantage of it you get that cap you get those kills on the isolated low health targets that's how you do it if they push you're pushing into you you want to kite away make them get into a crossfire situation kind of like what has happened and you'll be good to go moving on to our third most common beam mistakes that i noticed is being too passive now on the other spectrum of being too aggressive i also see a lot of people being too passive where as i'll be showcasing in this wrong example of too passive re uh, too passive gameplay some people think that if you have a 30 kilometer cons uh range on your guns you got to use all of that 30 kilometer range on your guns and you send the back and you snipe in the back and you're not really able to contribute that much because it's a lot harder to hit those really long distance shots and these people that usually sit the back of the map are also the ones that are asking for all the intelligence data and they're usually the ones at the bottom of the scoreboard due to the fact that it's really difficult to hit these really long range shots because it's just really hard to do it because it with a 12 13 14 15 second air time even if they turn a little bit they're gonna be able to dodge your salvo so it's really painful plus also in the bottom of the scoreboard also means you make less credits you lose you're not able to get as much free xp or commander xp so in the end it's kind of a loss even if, if when you do play two passes it's definitely a loss for sure it's definitely not a lot of fun unfortunately many cruiser and dd players hate passive bb players that sit in the back and you can kind of notice what's going on right now if you see how far back i am right now on the mini map if i was closer in to my teammates if i was closer in with them i could help push 
into them and push their team back because we would have the advantage over on the sea cap right but but the fact that i'm so far away there it, it just made it where i wasn't able to do much at all now in this circumstance as you can see i'm still i'm moving in with my team and i see the team pushing at me there the minnesota and i start to turn out well you'll notice me turning out in a little bit but normally what you want to do is bb should always be near the like near the front not not so close that you're just gonna die and loot and lose all your health to torpedoes because you want to have the bees in front of you but you're close enough to draw fire away from your cruisers and threaten enemy ships so that your cruisers are able to get that dpm but you definitely again you don't want to be so close that you take too much damage and can't run away it's a fine balancing act where normally you have your dd in front of you then the battleship is there to help tank and support and the cruiser is around the same area to, to get that dpm farm on whatever you're like tanking for them because more battleships more role is more of the tanking role while cruisers are more of the dpm and the dds are more of the spotting and countering to other dds now something that i see a lot of better about the battleship players have the issue of is balancing between the two it can be really rough different nations have different balancing acts of being too aggressive or being too passive but it also comes down with experience a good rule of thumb is to have the same or slightly lower hp percent as your team so if you're at half hp and your allied cruiser at 60 or 70 uh you're doing well but if you're at full health and your allied cruisers are at 60 or 70, you should definitely move in to take that fire away to help it so your cruisers just don't lose all their health you need to make sure you're tanking in a, in a battleship you don't want to be millions of miles away but you also don't want to be yellowing in for instance the yamato's good range for yamato is around 13.5 kilometers i think around 13 through about 18 or 19 kilometers is a good range mark for the yamato if you get within 12 kilometers or 11 or 10 you'll start to notice that there's sigma or dispersion of the shells get really trolly and that's because on the japanese battleships their dispersion is the closer someone is to them the worse their dispersion is but the further away they are the more accurate they are so you normally you want to keep that distance away to make sure your your accuracy is still up but they're not so far away that you're not able to put pressure on the enemy team now for for i'll say for the russians their dispersion is the closer that something is to them the better the dispersion is but the further away they are the worse it is so that's why if you're playing a kremlin you're trying to snipe someone at 16 17 kilometers dispersion is absolute dog water but then if they're you're shooting at someone from like 13 like 12 closer in it's a lot better dispersion that's why for the russian bbs now for the united states bbs the dispersion stays about the same no matter what that's why they're more known as the jack of all trade battleships and every other nation has the similar uh dispersion scheme the only two real outliers is the russian and the japanese where the japanese is the closer they are the worse it is the further it is the better and russians are the closer they are the better and the further away it are it is worse so that's for those two but in this particular instance as you can see i'm just letting him push in i'm not really going that far away i'm just making sure that he has to stay bowing to me while my team is getting crossfires onto him now the dispersion is definitely troll like i was saying before if something is getting closer to you you're just gonna get absolute terrible dispersion of the yamato this is just showcasing the kind of positioning i'm talking about in the same match earlier in the match i was in a really bad position but now i'm in a better position to make sure i can help support my team so this is number three for the most common mistakes that i've noticed for bb's the fourth most common mistake i see in world of warships for bb's is sitting bow in now tanking is important for the team but a common mistake is just to stay completely bow in this is just makes you a sitting duck easy damage farming from the me ships and all you can do is slowly reverse or turn broadside and hope for the best you also can't use your back guns which cuts your firepower by at least a third for most bbs the best tanking position is the cunning position same as 
the cruisers, you point the bow away from the enemy and they go enough to bounce AP shells. If you start taking heavy damage, you just full speed away and go dark. This technique also lets you use all of your guns safely. Once the enemy takes heavy damage, you can turn around and finish them off. Just make sure the turn in between his salvos to avoid taking a broadside to your citadel. Now, this particular match, I'm showcasing the Yamato. Just sitting, I'm going to be sitting bow in to the, to the battleships or whatever ships are down this lane. So you guys can take a look at that during this match. But normally, I see a lot of Musashis doing this. They'll sit like really far back. Just sitting bow wind, using only the front guns. I don't know why it's so common for Musashi players, but for some strange reason, I always see a lot of Musashi players doing it. I'm not sure why, but I definitely don't think it's a good idea for the Musashi players in general. I think it's more the fact that they just know that their guns have overmatch and other ships will have overmatch for them. And this is the reason why they do it. Now, there are certain ships that can sit bow in, right? There are certain ones where the guns are only in the front, like the Dunkirk or like a John Bart or the Kremlin, where it's kind of meant to be tanky or using island cover along with it for that tankiness. But overall, it's just very suboptimal to be sit strictly bow in and just reversing going forward because if you have any sort of he farmer farming you while you're in this position you're stuck bow in you're not able to turn out unless you get slapped by a bb and you're also a giant torpedo magnet since you're not really moving that much at all so i always highly recommend not to sit bow in unless you are playing a certain bb which can but most of these you don't want to because during this whole instance i'm only using my two front guns so i'm only using 66 percent of my full gun firing potential but i could be using all of my guns and i also could be able to get away quicker if for instance i got pushed really aggressively like for instance if i was just sitting here reversing against something like a gk or a schlieffen where they could just run me down with their secondaries i'd be dead i wouldn't be able to turn out i wouldn't be able to I, well maybe this even i could slap him before he killed me but for the gk no way the gk would definitely kill me before i got away now this particular match isn't act isn't really the best circumstance to show the wrong way but just imagine if you had a cruiser just farming me the whole time, which a lot of cruisers will do. They'll just farm you while you're sitting here reversing. They'll just do it all the time. But in this instance, this matching, this matching was like really weird. And this was like one of the only matches I could really find for this particular instance. So I apologize uh, for that. But after we're done watching this, I'm going to show you the right way for sitting bow in like the right way instead of just sitting bow in, i'm gonna show the proper etiquette so like you're able to like the proper turning out uh having the right angles and such so it's easier but pretty much i'm just showcasing the wrong way you're just reversing you're super far back you're not really giving that much support to your team you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere you're not really providing a presence in the game like you are there they do have to acknowledge you're there but you're not they're not going to fire at you. You're not going to be able to be that tanking battleship that they need. Because battleship's roles are to tank, to slap cruisers, and just have a presence. Like an anchor point. Like imagine a battleship is like an anchor, right? Like an anchor point. If that battleship is there, the enemy team cannot push that area until the battleship is either moved out of the area or dead. So they're not able to push up to where I'm at over at the back of the map on the 10 line. But the problem is that I'm so far back that they don't need to push me at all. They don't need to push me. They don't have to. They can just rotate, go around and deal with the other flanks. They don't have to. So for this particular badge, the Kremlin's like, oh yeah, well, I don't got to do anything. I can just leave. And that's exactly what he's doing. He doesn't have to push. I'm so far back 
I don't have enough pressure to kept him from turning out. If I was closer into him in a kiting position where I could use all my guns, I could have done a lot better of a job to make sure that he had to sit where he could just turn out and he got away. So that's why normally I do not recommend just seeing Bao win in certain in, in most battleships. You're wanting to use your all of your guns almost all the time if you're able to, and then you turn out if you need to like escape area. You just turn out, get in kind position, and just back and just full blast it away if you have to. But this is the wrong instance, of course. So this is definitely one of the bigger common mistakes I see for like Musashi's, Yamato's are like the most common ships I see doing this. Is they're the, the, they're the most common that I see that do this, but I've seen GKs do it too. And it's like, why? Like, I don't know, they'll just sit there, bow and I don't really do anything. I, I, don't, I don't know why. But there's a time and a place for it and it's not there. Now for this instance, I'm gonna show this the right situation to where I have a choice here to go bow in or to turn out and get into a proper position and not be bow in. And a lot of these mistakes all dwell around the same thing. Just don't be too aggressive and don't be suck bow in. If you get suck bow in, you're most likely going to die really quick, which sucks. And then you're going to die and you're not going to be able to do anything for your team. If you're in a kiting position, you can still reverse toward the enemy team. And then if you need to leave, you can then just full W away, heal up and turn back in and, and come back in, which is what is the proper way to do it. Now, in certain situations where you're on a flank where you are pushing, you do need to sit bow in and push in with your team. That's a different circumstance. If you're on a, on a on a flank where you're not pushing and you're holding, you want to be in a kiting position. And if you're on a position, if you're in a place where your team is going to be kiting away, where you're going to be giving up that flank, you want to be in a kind of position and slowly leave to make sure you're still putting pressure on the enemy team to where they don't just full blast it toward the other flank. You still want to have some kind of presence. So here, if you see, I see the Novo, I see the battleship. I also see the D there as well. And I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm going to just turn around. I'm going to get in that kiting position. So I do a slow turnout. I slow down to make sure I get a shot on the Novo there. I still am doing the turnout. I'm being a little bit unpredictable to make sure I dodge the upcoming torpedo. That's going to be, yeah, I dodge the upcoming torpedo right there from the Corona. I kind of slow down to a slow turn to get make sure that I don't uh I give him a little bit of a tease where it's still hard for the AP to do a lot of damage but it makes him still try to aim for that side and I'm making sure I put pressure on the battleship the cruiser and I make it where that D can't just hard W of the flank because as you can see my submarine dies so Yippee the typical, he just W's up, dies. All right. So now I'm on the flank alone with not that much support over here. So my job now is to be just that anchor where I make it where they can push up, but I'm going to make them suffer. And it's gonna be a very slow push for them to push up. And that's probably much what you wanna do. You don't wanna be stuck bowing because if I was stuck bowing, they could do a lot better job of just hard pushing me and getting on my flank with torpedoes and just hammering me with all those torpedoes. I'm not sure why the Dronado just, just kind of sat here. He kind of just let me, the first level, just do a massive chunk. He kind of did the same thing for the second one, but he started leaving as well, so I didn't do as much damage. But I still did a nice little uh, chunk there. But yeah. But did I still try up there? Not the highest amount, but it's still doable. At this point as well, they don't really have to push either. If you look at the mini map where this is the new, this is the new mode they added to randoms, the airships mode, which I'm not the biggest fan of them adding it to randoms. I prefer it being its own mode. A lot of times these matches just go into giant fallouts. It's a lot of like they don't have to push, right? They just have to wait for the airship to get down the lane and then they can push and kind of just, it's more of like a waiting game. They're waiting to push 
or whenever that airship comes. Now, number five, impatient with salvos. Another big mistake I see with common mistakes with BBs is being impatient with their salvos. Now for BB salvos are all about timing. In order to inflict maximum damage, and oftentimes that means waiting for an enemy to make a mistake before you punish them. Beginner players are sometimes impatient with this and fire too early, alerting the enemy to their presence for minimum damage. Good players know better and will often remain in concealment until the enemy shows broadside, then slaps the living crap out of them. I've had times where I've waited for over a minute or so so I can get that perfect shot to when the enemy makes a mistake. You shouldn't be waiting that long for a shot, but sometimes you should hold your shot for another 10 through 20 seconds in certain situations. Like if the cruiser is bowing and trying to turn out, or if you're undetected and a promising target shows up. One of the the most important, or one of the, the key ships that has this is the Incomparable. The Incomparable has one of the best consumers for battleships in the game with a 10.6 concealment. If you time your shots to where you're dark, and you're like, they don't know where you're at, and you kind of like sneak up and use that consumer to your advantage, you can get some really good broadside shots on targets and i'm not saying it's all the time but it's definitely something you, that it happens a lot you know i've seen a lot of battleships where they'll do like a full salvo on a ship that's bow in and then that ship will just instantly turn out if you have someone that you think is trying to turn out just shoot like one of your guns just to see if they'll turn Get that, get that bait. Cause like right there, that cruiser just tried to turn out when he was dark and I still got that shot. I didn't kill him, but I definitely slapped him, which was nice. It all comes down to knowing when to shoot and when not to shoot. If you in knowing when to use your concealment and not to use your concealment. Now with certain battleships, you can't do that. Well, certain battleships, you can. Like for instance, Yamato's are really bad concealment. Same with the GK. Uh, they all have really bad concealed bits. You can still be patient with your shots and wait for a good shot at the same time. You can't just hold your shot all the time. You have to get salvos down range to be able to conflict damage because you're not doing damage and they're doing damage. You're slowly going to lose that DPM trade over time, which isn't a lot of fun in the end of the day. But learning how to to like bait or not really bait learning when to punish someone for being too aggressive is one of the biggest things that a battleship player can do getting getting seeing someone that's caught bow win when they know that they're perma spot and they're kind of screwed and waiting for them to do that turnout turn and just getting that good slap and knocking out half of their health is one of the most important things for a BB player to be able to know how to do that or do that. But as of late recently, also, I've had a lot of issues with aiming where I know for certain I did the shot perfectly, aimed at the right spot, did everything right. RNG is just like, no, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. It's like, nah, you're not going to hit nothing. You're not going to do anything. Yeah, rip you, man. Yeah, sucks to suck pretty much. Uh, for that for those salvos like right now i'm trying to punish this balwin battleship to make it where he kind of leaves my teammate alone I'm trying to get him to leave him alone i'm also like i'm trying to get him to leave him alone but at this point that dude is so far up that he screwed no matter what i'm not gonna be able to help him at this point I do try to get the shot there on the cruiser. I don't remember if I slap them. Uh, no, I don't slap them for a disaster. I think I aimed a little bit too high on that one. And then, and then I got punished as I went broadside there. So their battleships were also waiting for me to turn out, which was very good for them. So they made the right to move there. They were waiting for me to turn out and they got a good slap on me. So they did a very good job waiting for my, for the opening up from me to slap me. So very good on them. 
All right. Well, for the final BB mistake, I did say there was a bonus one. So the final one I'll be talking about is predictable maneuverability. This is just going to be really short and simple. Pretty much, don't just sail in straight lines all the time. Be random. Don't just sail in straight lines. Because one, you're going to get slapped by BBs and other ships that can easily hit you. And two, DDs love shooting at BBs, cruisers, or anything. Not shooting, but torping anything that goes in a straight line. Because if you're just going in a straight line, not moving, not turning, not doing anything, you're just going to get torpedoed all the time. Be more predictable. Be a more unpredictable. Slow down every now and again. Do more turning. Uh, don't just sail in a straight line because you're just going to get torqued. That's the last mistake I see for a lot of you. Just be more predictable. Sorry, be, be more unpredictable. Be man more just maneuverable, you know? Don't just do a little dancing. Do a little wiggling, you know? Get down. Get down that night, man. Just do, do that little dance, you know? Get that little dance going on. Do that dancey dance. You know, do that little dancey dance. But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, thank you guys all for watching today's video. I do greatly appreciate it. But yeah, hopefully these six uh, beginner mistakes will help you guys uh, learn in the future or help, hopefully it helped you guys learn it all. But I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you all for being here. See you guys. If you guys have already, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. I also have a Twitch I stream daily. I also have a TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, I got it. But yep, I'll talk to y'all later. Thank y'all for being here. And deuces.